I walk along jungle trails in the heat-inflicted silence. Blackened, red-brick humps lie strangled in greenery against steep mountains devoured by rain clouds. I am in Mison, in central Vietnam, forty miles inland from the coast of the South China Sea. Flowers and grass grow out of every non-vertical surface of each monument, where altars, lamps, and lingas used to be placed, swimming in incense and camphor. Half-destroyed statues that recall India deep in Southeast Asia are embraced by columns in the walls, blotched blue and white with lichen. There are headless gods and time-mottled, dancing figures now ferociously explored by insects. The loose bricks are like missing teeth. The monuments, so hacked and battered, that what remains recall the abstract shapes of a modernist sculpture. A lichen-coated linga, the phallic symbol of Shiva's manhood, stands alone and sentinel against the ages. The size and abundance of temple groups B and C hold out the promise of a Vietnamese Angkor Wat. But once I come upon the other temple groups, I realize just how little is left of nine centuries of religious life here, stretching from late antiquity to the high Middle Ages. Group A is a mere low pile of rubble, testimony to American helicopter-borne destruction in a war of less relevance to Southeast Asia's future than are these ruins and what they represent. The fiercest nationalisms are often begot by what, in Freudian terminology, is the narcissism of small differences. What rescues Vietnam from being a mere southern redoubt of cynic culture is its Khmer and Indian heritage, which allows for a unique confection that is ever so similar and yet ever so different from the civilization of China. Invoking Champa from the 4th through 13th centuries is to expose the lie of Cold War area studies with which Washington remains enamored which place Southeast Asia firmly in an East Asia and Pacific realm. While in fact this region is part of an organic continuum that is more properly labeled the Indo-Pacific, whose maritime heart is the South China Sea. For Champa represents a seafaring, piratical race. Squeezed between the central highlands and the sea, with numerous rivers and natural harbors at their disposal, with woods, spices, textiles, honey, wax, and metals to trade. The Chams were well placed to benefit from the commerce between the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific. The French had it right when they designated this region not Southeast Asia, but Indochina. <laughs>